Thank you, Pekka, so much. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, it's a great, great pleasure in order to be with you and uh, share some of the, the thoughts about. Uh, well, I will, will be discussing a quite a different thing compared to what we have been seeing already. So I'm talking about a little bit more about those bits and pieces which are behind of those uh, enabling that uh, automated driving technologies behind. Uh, we, we have a history actually already started 2017 in order to, to talk about and uh, thinking about that how to implement that automated vehicles on the road. Uh, there was a, quite uh, some things already done in the US. Uh, 2015, we started those DARPA competitions where all those activities, what for example Google is doing today, we started. Well, 2017 actually we already implemented one first a kind of a automated vehicle, I would say. We have a fair competition with uh, Sensible 4 in order to, to, to bring in that automation technology and uh, do some trials. We invited even to the Ministry of Transport and Communication in order to get an experience, how it feels like in order to be, uh, uh, to be driving with or be passenger in that automated vehicle. Well, after six years, I have a uh, hardly imagined that uh, how that was done because on that time we actually were driving with uh, just having a GPS signal, so it was a basically like a train which was following the GPS track on a field. We didn't have any duplicated system in order to make sure that uh, the positioning signal is uh, always accurate, or we did have uh, some obstacle avoidance, but that was basic for the radars which are fairly we can detect something in the front, but that cannot really recognize anything. The, the, the Ministry of uh, Transport and Communication, who was uh, Miss Arne Perner at that time, she enjoyed a lot about that uh, drive, and uh, we were really happy about that and enjoyed that moment that uh, after six years later, I couldn't imagine in order to do that in the same way anymore. A lot of have done after that. Well. We have a kind of privilege in order to, to, to do also that uh, deployment in Hervanta area where we have a real experience how those automated vehicles and how that automated uh, driving will focus and uh, make people living easier in that uh, suburban area. Uh, we implemented a project together with Business Tamper. That was uh, one of those uh, funding things for uh, releasing that uh, governmental COVID-19 things and uh, putting things uh, boosting again. So our objective was really in order to, 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 to think about that uh, how this uh, automated shuttle service could serve that uh, village around in suburban Hervanta. We did that actually the two different vehicles. The one was kind of, I would say, the US type of approach where we did have a robot taxi and uh, having an experience that uh, how the robot taxi could serve that area. The second thing was that a shuttle bus, where we have a fixed route, it's maybe a bit more like a European type of approach in order to look about that, how to, the regular uh, public transportation could serve the people. And uh, there was a kind of also comparison between that the robot taxi approach and the shuttle bus approach, where we have fixed route. Uh, well, we implemented that uh, feeder traffic with last mile, and uh, we were driving a kind of a uh, route which is uh, just 800 meter. Uh, that was a kind of first phase of that uh, show project, what uh, Pekka was uh, already talking about. Uh, she, he mentioned actually that that was a second phase. I would say that it was an initial phase in order to see that if that uh, shuttle bus service could be put into the, the Hervante area, because some of those OEMs they were not willing actually in order to come uh, to that dense area where are a lot of pedestrians, even some challenging corners, blind spot whatsoever in order to do that. Uh, we were hand over, well, well what, what we found out already on that time is that uh, there will be a lot of those called, how Tavi was explaining those edge cases. And uh, of course, that uh, what we did in Miss Berner already beforehand, uh, we didn't have actually those edge cases. We were just driving a track and we were make sure with the guys having the stickers that uh, nobody is in the front of that in the dangerous spots. But that's something we cannot do when we are driving in the real world. 
So we wanted to make sure that uh, what are those edge cases and uh, one of those things what actually Tavi already pointed out uh, within this morning is that you cannot actually remove all of those edge cases. In order to make sure that your automated shuttle will work, you need some kind of remote control and remote assistant for that to do it if you want to leave that without any safety operator on board. And one of those things is that uh, we wanted to, to go to that uh, level four. Uh, well, the, the Kirsi already explains that, uh, that there, was a, there are those different ADA systems, which we talk about that they are automation levels one, two, three, maybe two, three, where a kind of ADA system where the driver is responsible in order to, to look about, look after that emergency braking or whatsoever, those kind of uh, driver assistance system. When we are talking about the four and five, in our scale, they are the first automation steps. Uh, four is the kind of highly automated. Uh, number five is full automated, whatever it means. I don't know quite exactly. It means that uh, uh, everything is automated everywhere. Uh, I doubt a bit if that is really a possible thing. But we implemented one of those overtake vehicles in order to drive 20 kilometers per hour within that route. To be fairly uh, obvious, that wasn't uh, we find uh, some things that uh, the first one, the, the, the 800 meters is not sufficient uh, in order to drive. During the, the nice summertime, people would like to walk <laughs> that 800 meters instead of taking uh, the, 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 the fairly slow bus, I would say. Uh, well, <laughs> the, the, Thinking about that uh, case that uh, when we see those edge cases that uh, we cannot uh, tackle by, uh, by the, the automated uh, driving system. Uh, the, the, well, most of those cases uh, when the, the, the things are going smooth, the, 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 the automated driving system will take care about uh, maybe 95% of that uh, driving uh, uh, length. Uh, that will take in care about. But let's imagine that at the point that uh, there is something in front, like in that uh, short video, which was just running, that uh, there is one cone or obstacle in front, and you have to make some uh, touring around. Uh, probably that uh, who is making that, uh, the, the, the vehicle cannot really justify that uh, what's that uh, causing the, the problem. And then it's fairly hard in order to do, you have to get a kind of information for the, the supervisor or remote operator that uh, what's the reason for requiring kind of assistance. And therefore, it's uh, fairly obvious that uh, we need a lot of sensing data, but also live video, how it's going to make. Well, the all thing said, if somebody is starting to, to control the vehicle, which is in the real environment, there are a few things you have to be aware of always. The one thing is that you always have some delays in your communication, when you are uh, communicating with the, the remote vehicle. Uh, good cases, that's less than 50 milliseconds in most of those 5G connected things. But uh, nobody will promise you that it's always uh, less than 50 milliseconds. It might be even free or even uh, five, mil, uh, five seconds uh, that there. Uh, and if you're thinking about uh, driving the vehicle remotely, which is having kind of a five second delay, you can imagine by yourself that uh, how it feels and how it's handled. Well, those technical pieces, uh, what have been progressed in the last six years. The first one is that uh, we have much better connectivity today. And uh, well, the, 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 the thing is not that uh, we are always getting something which is less than 10 milliseconds in those delivering packages. The, the thing is that uh, there is a more stable connectivity. So in even thought that uh, the, the delay might be 150 milliseconds, which is quite, uh, well, let's say, that's not uh, so big requirement, especially for the 5G networks. But the important step is that uh, it's a kind of maximum delay what you can face because we are always driving against it the maximum. And we always, when we are starting to do in some operation anywhere, we have to measure those maximum delays in that area. And that's what we, uh, how we started. To the second thing, what I was mentioning that uh, the 2017, we didn't have any duplicated system in order to make sure that our positioning signal is accurate enough. 
Uh, today, when you go to the real traffic, you always have to have kind of uh, two different things in order to make sure that uh, you are in a great positioning. The one is that, uh, of course, you have to have satellite signal, you have to have some error correction for that satellite signal. That's mandatory. Probably the Galileo will bring some uh, error correction also directly from the satellite, but that's the second story. But what we usually do is that we have a few landmark spots and we are comparing those landmarks to the accurate map that they where we are driving. That's the one of those reasons why the people are a lot of talking about those high definition maps, because that, that's the only where, where you get the accuracy for the map, which is less than uh, two centimeters. The, the maps, what you can find from the Google Maps, you probably have an experience that uh, sometimes the streets are not in the correct location, even the open street map, uh, that's the case. You may have a kind of a half a meter accuracy, that's, uh, that's fairly common, especially if there are some roadworks or whatsoever, you have to do the mapping all, all the time, uh, new time. Uh, if the remote operator is taking over the control, uh, the, the, we usually would like to, to, to see what's around the vehicle. It's like a driving in the, the, the behind of the windscreen. So we want to, to see that a 360 uh, video uh, around to the vehicle to make sure that uh, they are not uh, causing any injuries, accidents uh, in that uh, surrounding area. Well, the, the challenge is that if you have a video coming from the four different corners of that vehicle, that also requires fairly hard uh, throughput in order to put that. And that's not always available, especially in the rural areas. In the rural, urban areas, that's usually available, but sometimes there are big buildings uh, or there are trees because we are talking about fairly high frequencies within those 5G networks. We are talking about uh, something like uh, two gigahertz or five gigahertz bands. We are sometimes blocking actually, so that's why it's uh, fairly important in order to understand at least that in which points there is no delays in that uh, video what you are providing. And uh, well, remote operator, we would like to, well, we, Oh, they always laugh about a little bit about those uh, things that uh, you have a kind of predicting that uh, what's the existing part where that vehicle is supposed to go. And uh, even uh, trying to overlay to the, those LiDAR points that that's where we are uh, trying to go. And you can predict that, uh, okay, now it looks like that it will be in any case uh, touring around that obstacle in front. That's uh, fairly good because that uh, releases a lot of about that uh, people that they are how to handle those uh, situations. Well, about the, when we are talking about that remote controller things, uh, there are a lot of uh, data already available in the public inter, which is fairly useful for that uh, remote operator. There is a weather conditions which are available. There are those uh, uh, the, the, the path planning, uh, the trip planners for the, the Tampere city, uh, good things in order to kind of get uh, information for that uh, remote operator. Uh, the, the challenging thing when we are coming back to those bits and pieces, how to put all everything together is that uh, the interfaces are always different. So whenever you are taking a new service, which is uh, available for you in uh, any of those, uh, let's say the, the web browsers, you are using Firefox or whatsoever, uh, it's easy in order to put that address, but when you are reading that with the machine, you always have to pass a different type of strings. And the frequency of updating, for example, those weather services are always a bit different. So it's a bit challenging in order to get that, uh, well, let's say, to the machine readable format, which is uh, useful for the remote operation. But that's uh, one thing what's available in order to, to, to help the people. Well, that's what's available in the public internet, but of course there are some a lot of vehicle specific data as well. What is useful for that uh, remote operator in order to think about? Whether that uh, vehicle is stopped, if there is the blinkers which are turned into left or right, uh, that's quite useful because uh, probably if it's uh, turned to right, it tries to turn into right to the next intersection and that's uh, good information in order to do. Uh, those mobile network uh, quality parameters, they are available usually in those routers which are implemented to the vehicles, speed, vehicle state, uh, how it's handled. There's a lot of data also in order to be connected to that uh, remote operator center. 
now I'm a bit excited because usually we have had uh, some uh, challenges uh, in order to do that uh, videos in a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> magic. Well, there are some examples about that uh, how we have been measured those uh, 5G networks availability, the, the, the green pathway show to the quality of that network. Uh, imagination that uh, the, the vehicle is driving between that uh, route where we have a slam, so it's detecting about those porters. Uh, talking about that, uh, the, the, the timing when we are operating that uh, steering wheel, you look about those scales, we are talking about uh, 0 0.1 uh, second in order to, to make that uh, the steering is accurate enough for ruin any teleoperation. Those are the well, hardware, <laughs> the hardware stuff, how it looks like. We have a remote operator center, which is uh, looking like that. So there are the, the traffic-like status, which are reflected to the addressing for the, the passengers. They're actually real, coming from the, the Hervanta uh, the, the tram line and uh, one of those intersections, those uh, traffic lights, so we're really real. Sometimes we have a challenges in order to get those uh, the, the real-time manner. Video transmission for the duplicated, so that's when the vehicle is passing and uh, the, the, what the, the remote operator will see. And uh, there are some tests also which have been done and that uh, how to handle that uh, in, uh, when the, the he or she is going to do that overtaking uh, that uh, obstacle in the remote operation center. Thank you so much.